Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit. This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. Do you remember that? I wrote about this this morning on Facebook, and uh, I grew up in the 70s. I was born in 1969. So 70s, maybe it was on the 80s. Actually, I Wikipedia'd it just I was looking for an image because I put in my Facebook post of, like, what would happen. So if this is kind of like, you don't know what I'm talking about, hang in. But if you do, you remember that. You remember you'd be watching TV as a kid, and there would be that image that would come up with the different colors, and it would say, this is a test This is only a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. And it was, and there would be this man's voice. It would be very ominous. And then it would be like, beep. These like series of loud beeps that were just like, like, like fingernails on a chalkboard. And it was really, because I was like, what the fuck was that anyways? Well, I guess that was a thing. It was a way of... They would test to make sure that if they need to, like, drop into a program because, like, you know, it's World War III or the president or the leader of whatever country needs to go in and actually make an announcement, like, this is what they would do. They would test it, right? It's like when you're in school and they test the fire alarm, right? Like, it was a, it was a, it was a test. But I, something came to me this morning on the walk with my dogs. It has been a challenging week with everything. Marriage, business, kids, health, challenging. Challenging, challenging, like, fuck me, kind of challenging week. And I can easily go to the place of stories. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too. I find that so fascinating that women who've been following me for a while or who have invested time, energy, money into coaching and even come to live event and have been living this way of life, this life of more that I talk about here in the podcast and with the woman wanting more revolution and are flabbergasted when they feel themselves drift and go off course. Like, I thought I dropped that story. I'm like, oh my God, let's set the record straight right now. The stories never stop. The resistance will never stop. Shit will never stop. You just get better at being aware of it and course correcting. You just get better at pausing and maybe not reacting and letting yourself spin out of control with the stories. You just get better at being in that moment, feeling the shit that you feel and looking for the lessons and the gifts in it. Because they just it just keeps coming. And so as I'm walking my dogs this morning and I'm just thinking to myself, it's like in the dark, there's nobody around. And this came to me, which was, this is a test. This is a test. This is only a test, just like that old announcement used to be. This is a test. Your life is a series of tests. Every single day. Yeah, there's some days where things are flowing and great. But listen, there's still tests. There's still lessons in the quote-unquote good times, the positive stuff, the, the joy, the happiness. I mean, really, it's just all is. It's all the same thing. It's the way that we perceive things to see it as good or bad. So this morning, oh boy, this morning, my big boy, Tyson Jack, love that kid. Love that kid. He is wanting to shirk his commitments on a regular basis. And so we went to a program to help with his dyslexia um, in December of last year. So 2017. So it's just about, just about a year or a month ago that we went. Five, six weeks ago. And so it's something called the Ron Davis Method. It's amazing. It is used all around the world. There are facilitators all around the world. Results are incredible. And it's really just teaching how to use him to use his brain, like how to have tools, how to read. Dyslexia isn't just flipping the letters. It's lots of things which get them to a state of what's called disorientation, where it's just things start to move on the page and then it comes out in behavior. It comes out and it looks blurry to them. 
Um, and then they're unable to read and that also has an effect on other parts of life. For him at seven, it comes out as behavior and anger and lashing out. It comes out as self-doubt and self-esteem issues. Dyslexics too just have a hard time uh, understanding time. Understanding consequences is a big one, right? And there's like, here's the crazy shit of this in case you don't know anything about dyslexia. About 20% of the population are dyslexic. Diagnosed or not diagnosed, it doesn't matter. It's about 20%. Some of the most brilliant minds and big thinkers of the world. And so you don't want to squash those pieces. Like, what a gift it is, the way his imagination is and how vivid it is. And he's a smart fucking kid, but there's a block with this stuff. And so it's just simply learning. It's like learning how you learn best, right? It's like saying, if you're a visual learner and someone tells you something, you go, wait a second, I have to see it. There was a, a, a guy at, at my gym in one of the classes. I've only met him once. And I was like, what's your name again? And he says it, and it's Ezeth. And I'm like, how do, I, how do you spell that? Because, see, I know visually, I need to see it in my head. He's like, I-Z-E-T-H. I'm like, okay, cool. Ezeth, I got it. Now, I, whenever I see him, I see that. Because it's an unusual name, right? And so I'm, like, imprinting. I know this is how I learn. I need to see it in my mind. I need to see it in front of me. It's no different this way, right? So we went through five intensive days working with facilitator one-on-one, just him and Tyson. Or, her, pardon me, her and Tyson. Her name is Stacy. And learning all of this and learning the tools. And then on the last day, we came together. And so we have a commitment to doing this. There's clay work. So he visually builds a lot of these words, which are called trigger words, to create the visual picture. We read every single day using the methods that we were taught. And we do something with couche balls, which is catching. There's a lot of disorientation. And so it's really helping to hone in their balance and their nerve system. And... Um, And so he made a commitment to the work that we have to continue to, right? It's kind of like if you think of like, remember that Biggest Loser show? I don't know if it's still going on, but like they go away to the, what do they call it? The ranch, the farm, something like that. And they're in this environment where of course, you know, they're going to have a greater chance to succeed. They're not around family and friends. They're away from work, away from temptations, right? Well, now what's going to happen when they go home? Like people think that that's the work. No, the work continues now when you put this into the real world. Same with my woman who come to the live event, which by the way, if you haven't checked out yet, go to drkarenosrum.com slash the evolution to watch the movie of the five recent women that came through Women on Tomorrow Live 4.0 and the six spots that are now available as to record this podcast for the evolution coming up in February 2018 here in beautiful Victoria, BC, Canada. So what we're we talking about visually, visually. Yes. So yes, being away. So being there was, you know, again, we're in that environment, but now we need to actually do the work when we get back home. And so we created a schedule that he chose. I'm going to do my clay work on this day. I'm going to be reading on this day, Kuja on this day. It's really not something that takes a lot of time. Like I would say the whole week it takes, I don't know, an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half at most, but it's, you know, consistently doing daily habits. And he's got a day or two, which are kind of like off days. And so he has been fighting this ever since we came back from holidays two weeks ago. He's just fighting it tooth and nail. And we'll say, because he'll be like, maybe he's watching a show. I'm like, okay, Tyson, 10 minutes. Remember, we talked about this and we're going to do it. I give him lots of warning, lots of like, remember one. Because again, knowing that dyslexics have a really hard concept of time. And so I'm helping to be his clock, right? And just, and he's just seven too. It's just part of, part of that piece. Okay, mommy. Okay, okay. Okay, about two minutes. Cool, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. We get to that point, fights it. No, I don't want to do it. I'm not, you can't make me. Like, just becomes this different kid. And then we've talked about, well, why is that? We've talked about the importance of doing what you say you're going to do. And that, hey, this is not punishment, dude. This is so... And we've already noticed, it, like, a huge difference in his behavior. This week has been a little different. But a huge difference in his behavior. A huge difference. He's more calm. He's, he's, again, outside of this week, not as reactive. His reading has improved big time from where he was. And so today, it, like, really came to a head. He's been fighting, fighting. We've had tantrums daily, if not several times a day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, today's Thursday as we record this podcast. <clears throat> and it happened again. And so the consequence that he dealt with yesterday was he lost his iPad for a week. It's not punishment, it's a consequence. It's like, buddy, if this continues, it's been three days of tantrums now. Mommy's been super patient, but I'm now done. 
And so if you refuse to do this reading, you refuse and refuse to go to kickbox, which we just started, another commitment. He committed to going twice a week for a month, and seeing if he liked it, and then continuing. The same kid, which two days ago said, Mommy, I, I think I really want to continue this. I really like it. I'm like, cool. Because he's working with my coach, Rob, in a kid's class that Rob now has, kickboxing class. And I love that he loves it, but, you know, it's up to him. But I said, listen, we're going to get this equipment. You're going to commit... Because he's done lots of stuff and hasn't liked it. And he's been younger. We're like, I'm not going to push him. He doesn't want to go. I just want to go. But now he's seven. It's like, no, you've committed. It's got nothing to do with the money that we, you know, invested to get equipment and take his gloves and his kickers and wraps. It's got nothing to do with the money invested in glasses. It's just simply, it's commitment. It's some understanding learning this lesson and, and how important this is. And how many times I've told Tyson, like, dude, like, listen, most of the world does not honor commitments this is not how daddy and I operate and this is not how you will operate this is something you're going to learn from an early age and to do what you say that you're going to do is necessary to become a good human being you need to do what you say that you're going to do and so I held him to that and I told him yesterday I said listen you refuse to read and this is the consequence it's not me it's not a punishment I just told you this is what was going to happen if that happened. So if you chose not to read, you chose to fight me again, you chose to not go to kickboxing, because that's two commitments that you're not honoring, then he was iPad for a week. He kept going, gave him a couple different opportunities, gave him a couple different warnings, he kept going, said, okay. That's the, the, you know, you've chosen that consequence, that's it. No, I don't want that, I got mom. Mommy's doing what she said she was going to do. You need to trust me on that. You need to trust that I will always do what I say I'm going to do, son. So today, it continued. And yesterday, I said, if it continues like like tomorrow, buddy, the next thing that's going to happen is you lose your play date with Finn. So this is one of his little buddies, Finn. We set up this play date like three or four weeks ago. You know, with sometimes with the schedule stuff you have with the kids and family stuff and work, it can take a little bit of time to set up play dates. And so this was literally three or four weeks out that we set it. This has been looking forward to it. So that's what happened. He lost it. Now, this is 8.10. We need to be out the door by 8.20, 8.25 for school. He's not dressed yet. He's eaten. But now he's thrown a fit of, I'm not going to go to school. I hate you. This isn't fair. Great. I don't get to do anything fun. I hate my life. You know, the drama, right? drama but it's it's real to him in his mind that's what he's feeling so I realized in that moment that this was a test (laughs) parenting is the utmost of tests holy fucking shit this is a test I'm like okay what do I want right now well what I want is to get my kid to school what I want is I have a appointment with my swimming coach. I have a swimming lesson right after this. Like, I'm getting that in. My kids already got up early. They got in the middle of my morning time. Like, okay, it's what is. I'm not happy with it, but it's what is. But I also know that these are necessary things for me to be my best. And if I don't have these things, these things that make me me, that are requirements for me, I, I'm just, I'm not so good days do not go well you know it's like really knowing like what's gonna what's gonna fuel you best what's gonna allow you to show up as your absolute best shop best self so I said look at Tyson you got one more chance because I already I'd sent the text to his mom now luckily his mom doesn't check her phone often so because she didn't respond right back or anything <clears throat> so I said as I'm sitting there it's 8 10 8 12 8 13 I'm like I gotta get this kid to school I said listen who I need to become right now this is a test is flexible. Parenting is about flexibility a lot of the time, really. Right? There's rules and there's holding people to those rules. Holding your kids to those rules. Having them honor their commitments. And then there's also understanding that, you know, I'm looking at it and I'm like, dude, this dude's fucking tired. Like, he woke up early and like, again, not an excuse for him, but just information. So I said, look it. You got, you got one chance right now. And this is how this is going to go down. If you get up, And you move your body, and we do our koosh balls in our reading. 
And we're going to have to hustle because, you know, we're not going to be late for school. Mommy's not going to be late for a swim lesson. Then I will text back Amber. And that's exactly what happened. It was a test for me in that moment. Am I going to cave? Am I going to be, it's only going to be this way? Or was it important for me to see another possibility? This is a test. This is only a test. Doesn't mean I'm a shady mom. Doesn't mean Tyson's a bad kid. It is a test. Who do I need to become? So here's your more tip for today. Where are you being tested in your life when you were fucking running with stories? Really, you need to realize it's a test, number one. So where is that? Number two, and you're going to journal both these things. Number two, what is the lesson that you are supposed to see in this test? What are you being tested for? There's something for you to see in this, sister, and it's up to you to find that. you got to journal that down. So a couple of different things I'm going to leave you with today. Number one, if you don't already have your free Women Want to More Limited Edition journal, head over right now to drkarenosborn.com slash free journal and be one of the almost 400 women in 18 countries around the world that actually have one of these special journals. You take care of a little bit of shipping, I, care, I take care of all the rest. So drkarenosborn.com slash free journal. Make sure that you're receiving the Women Want to More newsletter. God, there's still so many of you that do not. It's crazy. Because I'm dropping stuff like there's trainings I'm doing inside a free Facebook group right now. And if you're not in the newsletter, like you're missing these things. Free trainings. So that's over at drkenosman.com. I'm also sending my more for action guide and video training, which teaches you how to start in power. And make sure you subscribe to this podcast. Subscribe. You get every single podcast that pops up on your phone. And make sure also to head over to iTunes and leave a review so that other women can hear this message and this podcast as well. So I will talk to the next episode, A Life of More. It's just one step away from you doing the fucking work every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter.